Here we're using infrared and mass spectrometry and NMR in order to solve the identity of an unknown molecule. There's an order to how we could approach this. If we start with the infrared, we'll get a good idea what functional groups are present. And then we can look at the molecular ion peak in the mass spec to find out what the RFM of our molecule is. Then we can use the NMR to get a feel for its structure, propose a candidate molecule, and then finally we can go back to the mass spec and have a look at the fragment ion peaks to see if that matches up with our suggested idea. Use it for confirmation. So let's start with the infrared. There's a carbonyl C double bond O at 1750 wave numbers here, and possibly a C single bond O stretch around about uh, 1120. Always the carbon to hydrogen stretches at 3000, but we can see that there's no broad absorption up in the uh, region where we'd expect carboxylic acids or alcohols or phenols to absorb for the oxygen to hydrogen vibration. So this is going to be an aldehyde or a ketone or an ester, and we can rule out carboxylic acids or amides. If we look now at the mass spec, we can see the molecular ion peak is at 86, so the relative formula mass of our molecule is 86. And now we need to start our working our way through the NMR. Be systematic about this. I'm going to start with the context. Okay, we know this is an aldehyde or a ketone or an ester. And then take a look at the number of proton environments. There are clearly two proton environments here. Let's label those A and B. If we look now at the chemical shift information, it's also worth noting that there is no absorption between 9 and 10 ppm where we might expect an aldehyde proton to show up. So this is not an aldehyde. We can eliminate that from the list. If we look at environment B, we can see that this at one part per million chemical shift corresponds to a hydrogen on a carbon in an alkyl environment. And the region between 3 and 4 ppm is typically a hydrogen on a carbon next to an oxygen. And now we need to use the area information. The area under the peak tells us how many hydrogens are in each environment. But before we move on to that, just notice that we've got a carbonyl peak in the infrared, but no protons on hydrogens next door to a carbonyl have shown up in our NMR yet, so we've got another little problem to resolve. We'd expect that kind of hydrogen to show up between 2 to 3 ppm. Looking then at the areas, we've got an area of 6 for protons in the B environment, and that's characteristic of two identical methyl groups. And four protons in environment A, that rather suggests two CH2s. So one possible solution might be this, although that doesn't really fit with what we think this molecule would be, and we've still got that carbonyl carbon to oxygen double bond to take into account. Looking at the splitting patterns now, if we take them both together, they're rather suggestive of an ethyl group. It's that characteristic signature of a quartet and a triplet that are linked to each other, suggesting CH3, CH2, the three hydrogens on the methyl group being split into four by the two on the CH2 and similarly the two CH2 hydrogens being split into three by the, the three hydrogens in the methyl. Now we've got all the information out of the NMR, and we're fairly sure we've got ethyl groups, we need to start looking at what the mass spec can tell us. Going back to the idea that we've got a relative formula mass of 86, if we've got two ethyl groups they'd come to 29 each, so that would be 58, and the carbon-oxygen double bond would come to 28, so that is 86. 
that rather suggests what we're dealing with here is two ethyl groups either side of the carbonyl, in other words a ketone, and that would suggest that those NMR signals for environment A are at an unusually high chemical shift, just outside of what you'd expect from the data sheet. What we really need to do though is to verify this using the mass spec fragments. Ethyl groups would show up at 29 and we've got a big peak there, and an ethyl group with a carbonyl attached to it, a CH3CH2CO plus fragment, would show up at 29 plus 28 is 57, and we've got a big peak there. So it looks very much as if the molecule we're solving for here is penton 3 ohn 